I'm here. I better shave. <laughs> we did 12 kidney dialysis. He went through a whole process of healing, and a few months later, we were celebrating his 83rd birthday with violins in the garden that he loved. And he lived. He lived almost another year. Well, there was where you had license. Yes. You learned to hear, to listen for the license. Yes. To, do the, to, to intervene or to, yes. to play the game. To beg it. To beg. Yeah. Well, the beg has got the force of, of spirit behind it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How are you deciding how to invest your life energies? I mean, what's, what's, where is that coming from in you? I was living in South America until about three years ago. And I, have, I was writing and doing seminars and going almost door to door. Then I realized that I needed to turn my life over again. And a few events happened which moved me to the States, moved me to Sedona. I happened to go there, and I don't have a rational explanation how a few weeks after I was living there, I was installed there, I was teaching workshops there, I was writing again out of here. But if I think about it, I feel that I, I have a sense of mission, I have a sense of purpose. This country is the most influencing country in the world. Everybody wants to be like the marketing that's come through the media from here. So I felt that if I put my energy here and affect a little bit of change, it will ripple to the rest of the world. Mm. This country has a mission, and it's mm. not living up to its mission. Mm -hmm. It's very superficial what's happening, even though it is also the place from where ripples are happening that can be imitated. So I'm living here now. I have concerns. I have concerns about the educational system, about the superficiality of values for children. Mm. But everybody else is imitating America. Mm. If this population would mm. open to its spiritual destiny, then one could live anywhere in their spiritual destiny. Will it? I hope so. How would it? What would cause it to do that? I think this, this crisis that's going on in this country. Trauma. The trauma. Trauma, the trauma would do it. Yeah. How heavy does the trauma have to get for it to happen? I hope not heavier than it is. But it's not happening at this moment. Particularly. It's not happening, but it might. It's going pendularly. It has, it has gone to an extreme. You for instance, last year's election, is a polarization Absolutely. that it couldn't go further. Oh, it could. It could. It could. It could. It could. I, I don't much, much think. further. It, it could, could go into a much more oppressive, fear-driven, fascistic model. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. it could. And that would be tragic for this country and for, for the, the rest world. of the world. Be tragic. That was in Argentina the day after the November election. And the president, who had been in jail during the military junta there, who couldn't go to his mother's funeral because they wouldn't let him out, mm. he sounded conservative after November 4th of last year. Right. He switched. And he said, we have won the war against liberalism or something like that. Very fast resonance. But I'm hopeful that something must happen, you know, that there is sufficient pain in this population that people are looking to some fundamental core values again. There is a change in the talk. And not imposed family core values, but there is, there is a longing. I'm hoping to see that longing. Right. See, I want to not confuse my hope with my assessment of what is. True. And I... When I look at what is, I assume it will get considerably darker before it turns around. I mean, well, if we're going to talk about trauma as a motivator. Mm -hmm. it, it could be that way, and I also have hope. Yeah. And, and I know what you say. I, this conversation I have at home many times a day. Yeah. What are we doing here? My wife thinks this is Germany in the 30s. Right. She has a more radical view. Right. She said, it's hopeless. Yeah. So I bring the hope in and said, well, we have to put out as much as we can 
to maybe put a little sugar in the ocean. I know the ocean is not going to get sweet yeah. because of that little sugar, but it might polarize. And I, I have a hope that is beyond the reasoning of this world. I think we, there, there, there must be, at some moment, a divine intervention. I don't know what shape it's going to take. Some people think it's going to be a massive landing, and some people think it's going to be a day of darkness and light. All of that could be just wishful thinking. Well, I see uh, the breakdowns as math as is spiritual intervention. I don't see, mm -hmm. I don't see something as not spiritual intervention. Yes. I may not be able to read the cards, okay, but I don't see it. I don't say, well, that came from and Satan or something okay, like that. Okay, and I see a rejoicing when you when you say that. Yeah. I see a joy. Yeah, and I was in a business conference a week ago. And people were trying to protect their corporation. I of said, course. might it not be yeah. that the, the highest thing is the dissolution of a corporation which is not in alignment with life? Well, they didn't like <laughs> they don't it. don't want much. to hear that. Of course not. Yeah. <laughs> what I find in the business community is that they, they want to want to do good, mm -hmm. but they are really locked into certain models that, that in which they, their power comes from the disproportionate distribution of wealth, and they really don't want to give that up. Of course. And that saddens me greatly, because you've got to then, if the change doesn't come from the haves, the change has to come from the have-nots, and the have-nots change is much more revolution, is, is much more violent. And it hasn't worked. I know. You know, I lived in Chile oh, during boy. the only elected socialistic government. Yeah. And it didn't work, you know, no matter how much idealism and socialistic uh, romanticism was happening, it just didn't work. Because there were no spiritual values, there were no core values happening. Really? There was really? a turning around the table. And really? then when it got a little uncomfortable, people started to say, we need a strong figure. Similar to what I hear in this country. Yeah. We need another position, another, not the traditional parties. And what, do we, what, do we, what did we get? We got 17 years of military dictatorship. Yeah. 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 A lot of death. Which the CIA helped to create. Oh, yeah. That, that's official knowledge now. Yeah, I yeah. know. That's yeah. very... Well, when I was... I was the socialists you, didn't work. The socialists didn't work. It wasn't working. No. It wasn't working. It was hyperinflation and... Oh, really? Running away with whatever people could. Really? Yeah. Really? But uh, there was something that did work. There was less fear to express. Mm -hmm. The halves had a lot of fear to lose, yeah. but they also could express. Yeah. With the military dictatorship, the suppression that happened was that nobody trusted anybody yeah. else. Yeah. And that isolated people. Do you see that the, uh, the um, information um, whatever language we want to use about communication changes. I almost have a very difficult time, I have a difficult time extrapolating outward because the, the, it's so profound how information changes power, how it goes from vertical to horizontal power. Mm -hmm. And yet I can see that just as the media are really still representatives of the power structure, so the whole mass communication ultimately can be controlled You're or talking be about, uh, preempted net, or nets and uh, yeah, yeah 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 it's not going to be a free ride it's right. not uh, yeah but it's still not controlled it's still no. not suppressed no and no. that's a wonderful example of how I, I was at the UN about a year and a half ago and I was speaking about vital identity instead of national identity. <laughs> and I was saying we, we developed a national identity basically for trade. For what? Trade. Yeah. The ships needed different flags, mm -hmm. who to attack and who not to attack. And in instantaneous information network, the trade happens out of time. It happens now. The data on the net or the yes. data on the computer yes. happens now. So what is the purpose of national identity? Hmm. Is, is there a purpose? They're saying maybe United Nations needs to move to that place in which it helps disarm the nations, dis disarm the fear of the separateness. Yeah. Well, they didn't like it no, much because their survival no, is that. No, no, no. But what if we would become planetary citizens? 
Well, I think the, the threat of losing ethnic diversity is uh, deep. And the, I mean, people's identity, there's a certain size that people identify with that becomes meaningful. I think it's stretching it in big countries already. You mean as a nation that is like an empire? It's like a big ego. Right. It's like But you were ego. saying something the other day, one day, about expanding your identity yeah. to include. Exactly. Because it, 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 you never lose your ethnic quality and you never lose your face or your... Yeah. But it yeah. gets included. It yeah. gets encompassed in a different way. But what the UN people say to me is, it'll just turn into a huge bureaucracy. And I, uh, I mean, I could imagine to <laughs> be living in this country and yeah. seeing the inflated nature of the bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. I could see that happening. And I also see the unwillingness of nation states to relinquish their power. Absolutely. Uh, even though the business community is taking it away from them anyway. But then there is something called privatization of states. Yeah. Chile and Argentina have gone through a privatization that is producing unemployment or new entrepreneurship. And what is interesting about it is that the agility, the speed of getting things done has increased. But I'm looking yeah. at it from, from the perspective of educating ourselves and our next generation truly from being souls that have bodies instead of being bodies that have souls. Right. You know, what, what is yes. the shift? Is it an experience that needs to take place? Or is it a context that needs to be... It's a context that allows us to recognize that identity. Exactly. And a language that allows us to speak from that identity. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the most interesting game in town, as far as I'm concerned. And that's what I'm dedicated to. And what I feel is that we have to train ourselves to be able to speak the language of soul rather than speak the language of ego. Right. And I find that very interesting because I keep catching myself sliding back into my somebodyness, uh, incarnational somebodyness. So the giving up of the social respectability of being just a person. It doesn't mean you change the form. It no. just means you change the perspective from which you're investing in the form. Right. Yeah. I mean, in the work I do with aging, it's very clear that if you're a soul, yeah. the experience of the aging of the psychophysical body is an entirely different experience than if you think you're real. <laughs> right. If you think you're exclusively real as a physical, social, psychosocial exactly. identity. Now, what do you think has stopped people that have had this experience to go back into the workplace and speak from there? I think the context is too strong still. I think the conspiracy of consciousness to define reality is still too strong. Right. So that that is now still seen as deviant. It's still seen as patholo pathology yeah. rather than liberation. And that's really uh, the shift of gear has to occur. Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm working on. Yeah. Because I remember having a patient once. She comes in and says, I'm an epileptic, schizophrenic, alcoholic. I need a medication. I said, wait a minute. You are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Still, she answered. And I said, of course, and forever. Oh, so I don't have to do all these things. It was an instant recontextualization That's of great. the essential identity. That's the one. That's, That's the, the one. one. Yeah. I wish we could talk on and on, but we can't. <laughs> I thank you so much for it's having me. a here. pleasure, a pleasure, really. It's nice to get to know you. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you so much. Mm. Wonderful seeing you again.